Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today's June 30th, and right now we're looking at the visible satellite imagery, and we're going to do this again here today as we have this marine layer around the area. It's going to burn off during the day for most areas, and we're going to warm up quite nicely here across the region. We'll take a look at this trough kind of sliding through BC over the next couple of days, and we'll take a look at the warm up that's coming after that. Looks like some heat is going to settle down across the region here. Now, this is looking at Paradise Mount Rainier, nice glorious blue sky. Shouldn't be much. Th uh, thunderstorm activity across the cascades today either so yeah if you're in the backcountry there definitely a nice day to be out there across some of the higher terrain this is seabrook washington looks like the wind's getting the camera a little bit out there but you can see the marine layer is not too bad it's always a nice day out there on the washington oregon uh, and the bc coastlines this is Seattle Tacoma. Check it out. They got the gale warning here down the Strait of Juan de Fuca, small craft advisory out there across the oceans. And I'm going to show you why the gale warning uh, kicks up here. I showed this yesterday as well, but you can see the 80 meter wind speed here. And as we go through the afternoon hours, watch this wind kick up here and it kicks up across the east slopes of the Cascades as well. But look at these wind speeds here as you go through the late evening hours here, as we get the warm up across the interior and you set up that gradient, you really get these powerful westerly winds down the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Nice mother nature air conditioning there go into saturday afternoon something similar of course as you go there and that will continue on in through the next couple of days now this is looking at two meter temperature this is the nam 3km so you can see as you go through the afternoon hours you warm up the interior here and that's why you get those strong westerlies here and those why those westerlies come down at the east slopes of the cascades here too and as they come over they dry and compress here low relative humidities and we'll look at that here in the next slide but as you go through saturday afternoon you can see the warm-up again happening there and it's going to drive those winds out of the west here on a daily basis this is looking for fire weather watch late saturday morning sunday night or to saturday night here but probably going to continue on through Sunday night as well as you can see fire weather watch due to those west winds coming down off the higher terrain there low relative humidities out there so it's not going to take much to spark some fire activity out there gust to 35 miles per hour similar thing here from Pendleton Oregon as well just a heads up there watch out for that fire danger now this is looking at relative humidity so this is the NAM3 cam again here we're looking a little bit closer view you can see the slopes of the Cascades of Washington Oregon here now watch as we scroll through the afternoon hours look at how this air just dries out here with those westerlies coming down across the Cascades. Then we go in through Saturday, kind of we relax at relative humidities rise through the morning hours. But then look as you go through Saturday afternoon as well. You can see those relative humidities really drop off. Then again on Sunday here. So yeah, watch out for that fire danger there. East of the Cascades especially, even up through British Columbia also. This is a wider view of things here, 18,000 feet, 500 millibars, Alaska, BC, Washington. You can kind of see the above average heights over us now troughing kind of moving across british Columbia, keeping things from getting too hot in the meantime but then as soon as that trough kicks out here you can see the ridge building all the way up into the northwest territories in the yukon here really going to warm us up here across pacific northwest we'll look at that in some more detail here in a moment this is like an 850 millibar temperatures here and you can kind of really get an idea of this trough kind of keeping things suppressed across some of the pacific northwest as much of the southwest is going to be baking here for the next few days but then it's going to be our turn as you can see these temperatures really going all the way up into bc here at 5,000 feet as we start to really get this warmth here into the pacific northwest and this is going to be occurring during the fourth of july as well more on that here in a moment and this is seattle tacoma this is a cross-section temperature here this would be about 5,000 feet the top of this graph would be about 10,000 feet and you can see at the surface over the next few days you know we're warming up not bad here but then you can see by the fourth of july we really start to turn on the heat a bit here as we start to go through the extended forecast you can clearly see those warmer days on the horizon this is tri-cities just downright ridiculous over there and again this would be about 5,000 feet here and 10,000 feet but you can really see the warmth especially during the afternoon hours at the surface there this is Quileute interesting look at things here this would be about 5,000 feet similar chart here and you can see the warm air aloft coming although it doesn't translate to that warm at the surface you got the immediate coastal areas that are going to be helped out by the ocean out there but you can see the warmth aloft uh, uh, making its way into the Pacific Northwest Portland International here you can see these warm days coming up but then you see the heat turn on on the 4th of July and the 5th of July here across some of the Willamette Valley as well so yep definitely going to warm up here across pacific northwest vancouver international and you can see that heat coming by the fourth of july here as well 
Now looking at this, this is six hour precipitation type mean sea level pressure. There's Washington, BC, Oregon, Alaska here, Gulf of Alaska, put into motion in these troughs this year, at uh, this time of the year, just don't have much punch. You can see some light precipitation, maybe skirting the northern tip of Vancouver Island, some of central BC, some of the Rockies, and maybe bring some thunderstorms out there across Alberta as well. But you can see not much precipitation to speak of here, folks, across western Washington, Oregon. Although we may start to turn on the thunder storms again for some of the higher terrain through the extended you can see all the way out towards next thursday some of that activity returning here but no no precipitation over the next eight, 10 days expected for seattle portland vancouver bc we'll see how that trends here that can always change but it is our dry time of the season of the year this is looking at seattle 81 degrees seven degrees above average still nowhere near the record high set back in 1987 of 93 and again 2021 here you can see that greatest heat wave here in pacific northwest history that's now you know that you can see the record highs being back down towards normal here 93 96 for example now this is looking at the national blend of models here it might be a little bit conservative but you can see for today 78 for seattle or so over the next few days maybe some mid upper 70s for seattle but then you can see as we get towards the third fourth check it out we really start to warm up some mid and upper 90s possible on the fourth of july for the willamette valley some 90s potentially getting up towards seattle and eastern washington warming up the valleys of bc the heat is going to be taken over the pacific northwest here look at the fifth of july here portland could be punching up towards 100 degrees here as well bc warming up quite nicely vancouver island really you know the only immediate relief there is going to be along the washington or Oregon coastline, some of Vancouver Island there as we go on in through the extended here. As you can see, 84 for Seattle. We're clicking day at a time here. The temperatures remain quite hot here through July 10th. This is Portland International Airport, and check this out. You got the the 4th of July, mid upper 90s possible, then the 5th, possibly temperatures up towards 100 degrees for Portland International Airport. So yes, the heat is coming, and it looks like it's going to hang around for a while. This is the GFS as of last night. And you can see the control and the mean have several days here up at around 90 degrees and possibly even warmer coming up. Tri-Cities downright scorching over there at times. And you can really see this heat going through July 10th here. I mean, you could get up towards 110 degrees at times here coming up. Now, this is looking at the GFS ensemble run here too. And you can kind of see this heat just last all the way towards mid-July. Now, this is looking at total precipitation for the next 10 days. And you can just see the sparse amount sparse amounts across some of the higher terrain here not much for seattle willamette valley here as i've been mentioning here it is our dry time of the year we're one of the driest spots in north america during the summertime and i'm going to show you this in the next slide this is the european extended that ran last night this is 1100 hours out and this is just uh, kind of how it works in the summertime the monsoon starts to return down here to the southwest so phoenix is usually wetter than seattle during some of these summer months and you can kind of see that you know, the lack of precipitation here across much of the West Coast and the East Coast is getting their thunderstorm activity and whatnot. And yeah, we're just one of the driest spots in North America during the summer months here across Pacific Northwest, all the way down the West Coast. This is six to 10 day temperature probability outlook bullseye right here on the Pacific Northwest. Six to 10 day precipitation outlook. I'm not even sure where this is coming from. We're not seeing a lot of precipitation showing up in some of the models, but we'll watch that as we go. And you can see the suppression of the monsoon there across the desert Southwest through July 9th. Now, here we go. If you missed this yesterday, you can see the moderate drought across some of the Cascades, Oregon, dealing with some severe drought as well. And then we go to June 27th here, scrolling across. You can see the addition of some of the drought here across southeast Washington. And then across Oregon here, you can see it added to the coastal range. Some of southwest Washington included Puget Sound Metro here, about abnormally dry. But you can see Skagit, Whatcom County, and the moderate drought region there as well. Hopefully that doesn't translate to um, more forest fire activity here west of the Cascades anyway. Or anywhere across Pacific Northwest. This is sea surface temperature anomaly. I've just been showing this one day by day. And as I scroll through here, you can see the warming of the equatorial Pacific, the incoming El Nino here, and the warm water across the coast of South America. La Nina is a distant memory in the rearview mirror now. Taking a look here at the CFS forecast, I've been updating this daily also. This 
uh, the actual ensemble mean has trended downward just a hair, but it's still getting into strong El Nino territory Friday, June 30th, you can see there. And we're waiting for this one to update here. We should be getting this in the next few days or so. I'm not sure exactly when that comes out, but it might not be until like July 5th, but we'll, we'll continue to monitor this. As you can see, the June 1st forecast is out and they update this once every month. But yeah, anyway, nice weather here. Summertime is here for the Pacific Northwest and we are going to warm up here starting about July 4th here for much of the Pacific Northwest. So hopefully you guys get out and enjoy the weather here and try to remember this by the time we head towards the fall and winter months, of course, as we're going to go back down to our normal weather here in the winter months here. But El Nino years always can be interesting. We could be warmer than normal, maybe drier than normal, or in some years we can get uh, some pretty wet you know, systems moving through here and be, even be above average at times. And you can't rule out snowfall still in El Nino years. It does happen. We've had some big snowfalls in El Nino years as well. Even the 2019 February was an El Nino year there. So just because we're in El Nino doesn't mean we can't get snowfall in the fall and winter months here across Pacific Northwest. It's just less likely. So anyway, yeah, hope you guys are liking these videos. Click like and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.